Hello everyone and welcome to this time of worship. My name is Karen Harbison and I'm the minister at Westburn Parish Church in Greenock. Today we gather together on the day of Pentecost, a day when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples in Jerusalem, coming of the Holy Spirit to the church today, the coming of the Holy Spirit as wind and fire and dove. We have a windmill, a symbol of that day. It's a little uncertain as to how much or when uh, the wind will blow and make the windmill turn. But then that's just what happened um, and on the day of Pentecost, just what happens with the Holy Spirit now. We never know when the winds of the Spirit will blow and move us in a different direction. So let us come to worship God on this day of Pentecost. Come and see the Holy Spirit is here, the wild wind who blows away our doubts and fears, the one who remains with us forever. Come and worship God our Maker, who has sent the Spirit to guide us and give us comfort. Come, let us worship. We come together now in prayer. Let us pray. God of Pentecost power, amazing people thousands of years ago, astonishing us today, we offer to you our praise and relish every story told in the past or told today that speaks of your transformative grace, your empowering urgency and your overflowing love. We praise you for the Pentecost spirit that transcends the boundaries of language and culture that we use to segregate and differentiate, revealing your vision and our reality, that we are all connected and one with creation. Forgive us when we have used words to divide and conquer, to harm and betray, and show us a different way. Forgive us when we use our energies to defend the much we have, with little thought of those with nothing. Expand our vision to see how our decisions affect the lives of others. God of Pentecost power, work in us, motivate us, let your spirit stir us and move us, that the praise we offer would be honest and heartfelt, building us up to be the best of who we can be as your beloved children. Amen. And so we hear the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers speaking in his or her own language. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Media and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles, converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia, yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, 
these people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Listen to these words, fellow Israelites. Jesus of Nazareth was a man whose divine authority was clearly proven to you by all the miracles and wonders which God performed through him. You yourselves know this, for it happened here among you. Amen and thanks be to God for this, his word to us. Choosing a gift for someone else, whatever the occasion, or even if there isn't a special occasion, can sometimes be easy and can sometimes be difficult. Sometimes we have an idea and sometimes we just see something that we know will suit the person really well. Sometimes it's a pleasure to look for and find just the right gift and sometimes it's a chore. We know what it feels like to receive a gift which has had a lot of thought put into it. A gift which means a lot to us. A gift which is just right for us. A gift which comes as a lovely surprise. We want to try to give the right gifts to other people. For the giving of those gifts is a sign of our relationship with them. A token of our love for them. Today we are celebrating God's gifts to us and especially we're thinking about God's gift in the coming of the Holy Spirit and in the gifts that that Holy Spirit brings. These gifts of God are just right for us for this day and for all days. These gifts of God are a sign of God's relationship with us and part of the way God shows love for us and to us. In the book of Acts, we read of the followers gathered in Jerusalem and the gift of the Holy Spirit being given to them. The city of Jerusalem was busy. People had come from all around to celebrate this festival of weeks, remembering the giving of the law, the Torah, and celebrating the wheat harvest. The followers of Jesus were gathered together in one place, still wondering what Jesus had meant when he had said to them, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This was the day they would find out. The followers were together in a house and suddenly there was a noise which sounded like a strong wind, a wind blowing, and the wind and the noise filled the house. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which touched each person there. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. All this made so much noise that those out in the streets gathered at the house and they were amazed because each one heard what the followers were saying in their own language. The followers were filled by the Holy Spirit, enabled by the Holy Spirit to do and be exactly what Jesus had said. They were able to witness for him to people of all nations, to tell the amazing things God had done and was doing. 
to express God's love and tell God's story. Immediately in response to accusations that the followers were drunk, Peter was able to explain things in a more detailed way and to talk about the prophecy of Joel, familiar to many who were present. Joel had spoken about God's spirit being poured out so that God's message could be proclaimed. On that Pentecost day, the spirit was given, gifted to the followers gathered from different places, uniting them as a Christian community, enabling them to speak and to tell God's message and sending them out to be God's people in the world. The gift of the spirit was important to them, but, but was given not only for them, but for all, for the life of the community and the life of the world. On this Pentecost day, the Spirit is given, gifted to us as Christ followers, uniting us as a Christian community, enabling us to speak and to tell God's message and sending us out to be God's people in the world. The gift of the Spirit is important to us, but is given not only for us, but for all for the life of the community and the life of the world. We are given, as Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a variety of gifts, wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues and interpreting what is said. The one Spirit gives out these gifts. The one Spirit of God gives out these gifts. They have a common origin. The gifts are different but complementary. The Holy Spirit does not intend the gifts to be used in isolation, for one person's gifts helps the others. Today, this Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is once more given to us May the breath of the Spirit bring new life. May the dove of the Spirit bring peace. May the flame of the Spirit bring hope. May the wind of the Spirit bring change. And as we receive these gifts of God's Spirit, may we use these gifts to tell God's story, to show God's love and to serve God's world. Amen. Today we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. This weekend though is another celebration as we mark and celebrate the Platinum Jubilee of the Queen, a remarkable 70 years of service to the country and Commonwealth, service grounded in Christian faith. So in our prayers we give thanks for the Queen's life and pray for her using words from her coronation, seeking the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen her. So let us pray. With Pentecost excitement, we commit ourselves to your service, ready and willing to meet the challenge of this new day. Inspire us to action. Motivate us to speak up and bring purpose to all we do. Use who we are and what we have to bring your good news to places near and far through our compassion and grace. We give thanks for those who offer themselves for public service and commit their lives to that purpose. We give thanks for people who volunteer, who give so much to help others to thrive. We thank you for relationships built, for people of all ages comforted, encouraged, supported, nurtured, given new opportunities, made to feel they matter through the dedication of others. Today we give you special thanks for Her Majesty the Queen as she celebrates her Platinum Jubilee. We thank you for her faith in you and the countless lives she has touched over the years. We continue to pray for her, for her as those gathered 70 years ago did. Strengthen her, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost the Comforter, Confirm and establish her with thy free and princely spirit, the spirit of wisdom and government, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, 
and fill our heart, O Lord, with the spirit of thy holy grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy Spirit present with us, guiding, guarding and enabling us, we bring to you our prayer for people and situations close to home or far away, seeking to share with you our thankfulness for so much good that we see and our anxiousness for so much that troubles us and the peace of the world. We offer these prayers in a moment's quietness. Holy Spirit present with us, we bring to you in quietness our prayers for people and situations close to our hearts and those whose stories we hear on news and through television reports and in newspapers. We pray especially for those who are anxious or ill or grieving today. Holy Spirit, move in us and through the church. Enliven us to rise up and serve our God and our world in all we do and say. Amen. Spirit of wind and fire, spirit of mystery and promise, spirit of God our helper, blow at our backs, breathe in our hearts, be the energy for all we do to spread love and justice. And may the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day of Pentecost and always. Amen.